Hello, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I'm going to be drinking and talking about Rubens Brews Meta Modern Pacific Northwest Amber Ale, part of their 10th anniversary se- series. Um, this is number one with Georgetown Brewing, which I don't think I noticed before. Um, I've had this a couple times, and I liked it a lot, and too long didn't read. <laughs> I think that you could say I particularly enjoy beers that mix a strong malt and a strong hop, hop character together. That's not the only style of beer I have I enjoy, but in general, especially when I'm talking about more hoppy beers, a strong malt character goes a long way to balancing that out in my own tasting and causing me to enjoy that. So, now that I've let the cat out of the bag, um, given you my secret, etc., let's talk about this. So, this is specifically an amber ale, which means, generally, your, your malts are roasted darker than paler ales. Um, that means that the malt flavor is going to be more on the toasty side of things. Not quite so toasty as a porter or a stout, or um, some of those others, you know, maybe Schwartz beer or something like that, um, but definitely darker than a pale ale, a Vienna lager, um, possibly comparable or a little bit darker than a Bach. Uh, so I should be expecting strong malt character. I should be expecting um, maybe toast, not roast. <laughs> toast, not roast. I'm brilliant. <laughs> toast, not roast. Uh, yeah, that's about what that's about it. Now, specifically, this being a Pacific Northwest Amber Ale, we can also expect it to be relatively strongly hopped, and that indeed is the case, as I recall. Oh, just noticed this. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, I saw a 2012 on the can, and I thought, crap, is this a 10 year old beer? I mean. Not that I'm complaining. I drank an 11-year-old beer early, uh, this weekend, and oh my goodness, it was something else. But it was also a bourbon barrel-aged uh, stout, which was intended to be aged for a long period of time. Um, but now I realized it's the 10th anniversary, and so it's 2012 to 2022, indicating, I guess, that Rubens Brews is 10 years old. So, Amber Ale, strong malt character. Uh, toasted, uh, not really burnt, uh, a darker color, uh, a redder and amber color, but Pacific Northwest, strong hop character. So that preamble aside, let's uh, get into it. Oh, and the hops are there right off. Uh, strong citrus hop. So maybe a mosaic or a citra hop was used in this. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what do we see here? Nice cream colored uh, head. It's a decent head. It's rocky. As I've said before, that means there's different sizes, bu- sizes of bubbles involved. Oh, it smells delicious. Um, okay generally at the nose it's mostly the hop character so uh, citrus um, orange peel it's definitely on the orange maybe a touch of grapefruit side of things not really the lemon and definitely not the lime Um, there's a little bit of malt coming through in the nose but I'm gonna guess that's most that's gonna be more constrained to when I start drinking it There's a a creaminess to the nose as well. Interesting, my uh, left nostril is doing all the smelling. This smells like a nice, fresh um, IPA, really, with the the hops really being the dominant characteristic. The color, 
Uh, it's like super weak coffee. There's less red. It's more browns and tans. Uh, in the light, it's almost uh, just the dark side of golden. Sorry, I need to remember that my camera cuts off like right here, so don't hold it up here. Hold it down here and <laughs> contort. Uh, yeah, so less of the red for an amber. I mean, um, an amber ale doesn't mean it's the red side of amber. It just means it's it's the toasting level to the to the uh, malt to the grains, and and so yeah, being being a, a dark toast brown, um, kind of a dilute wheat coffee kind of color. Yeah, that's nice. Let's uh, see how it tastes now. Hmm. The coffee is uh, is present actually. Ooh, oh, some caramel. Okay, um, think of this through. So, several different layers of hops. Um, the, the, the coffee, it, like the first reaction in my mouth is, uh, coffee, like, uh, a, a, a black, uh, black coffee, um, a medium roast in a French press is, is, I think the, the, the right level of coffee. Um, you're definitely tasting the grounds. Um, but it's not like burnt like a French roast or an Italian roast. Um, then there's apple, uh, like stewed apple, and then uh, caramel. And that's all kind of the, the front of the tongue and then down to the sides. And no, the tasting zone theory has been long, uh, you know, disproven. It's, it's, you, you don't have tasting zones on your tongue. Uh, you have all the types of the tasting parts all over your tongue, um, but just kind of where I tasted it as it went around my mouth and then swallowed it. So there's these rich, uh, nice malty characters that are that are definitely uh, very very uh, there. I'm not going to call them dominant yet. I'm just saying they're they're there. Uh, there's other things going on as well. So coffee, stewed apples, caramel down around the tongue. Uh, but then there's this nice uh, IPA bitterness. It's not an IPA. It's an amber. It's a pale, it, it's an, um, you know, an in, in India amber ale, <laughs> IAA, <laughs> as it were. Um, but the, the hop bitterness, uh, definitely, I'm going to guess these are, uh, I am not an expert on hops. I am, this is merely the label that's coming to my mind, and I've learned to trust that, but I also doubt it. So, for what it's worth, caveat, these are hops, duh. I'm guessing these are probably mosaic hops that are involved here, based on other mosaic beers that I've had in the past. Um, and there might be citra and, and other hops. You rarely see a single, you know, single source hop or single type of hop in, in a beer. It's usually a mix to develop the, the primary, the, the flavor characteristics you're looking for. But we're looking at this really nice, um, to the herbaceous juniper side of hops. Uh, and it seems, I would guess, or I would describe it as being more in the roof of my mouth. And then as I swallowed down the back of my throat. And that's happening at the same time that the coffee, stewed apple, and caramel is going on on my tongue. So it's this really nice combination of stuff going on. I, I like that a lot. And I should stop talking and drink some more. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all there. It finishes surprisingly clean for all that's going on. I mean, the hops are lingering, and really that's all that I'm left with at this point is hops. Five, ten, ten seconds after I've swallowed. Uh, but the like the, the liquid, the malt character, the malty part of the drink, the, um, the coffee, the stewed apple, and the caramel, 
uh, that goes down and finishes really cleanly. There is very little of that left in my mouth. Maybe uh, an apple juice aftertaste, but it's only the slightest. Uh, and the hops kind of, they, they, they were maybe um, not hidden, but the, the malt character was stronger when you drank it, when you had the liquid in your mouth, but now that you've drunk that, you're left then just with these uh, hoppy, hoppy leftovers in your mouth. I would say that that lends to this being a really nice savoring beer. It's very nicely balanced. Because the malt and the, the hops are, are working so nicely together, they're very nicely balanced. Um, it, it could go well with a, a wide variety of savory dishes. Um, even relatively delicate flavors, I believe, would, would not be uh, dominated by this. Uh, but I think this is a particularly good savoring beer. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say a lot of hoppy beers lend themselves to just savoring by themselves. But this, because of what's going on, because nothing, it's nothing, there's no fireworks going on. It's a handful of very nicely developed, uh, very clear uh, flavors. It's really just nice to savor, to enjoy, to hold it in your mouth for a bit, uh, you know, to think about it or don't think about it. Just have it around while you're thinking about something else. Uh, pondering, slowing down and pondering and thinking about your life is not a bad thing to do from time to time. And uh, this would probably, probably be a good beer to do that with. Definitely. Well, this has been Ruben's Brews Meta Modern Pacific Northwest Amber Ale. This is a very good beer that I am enjoying quite a lot. I'm a little bit sad that this is the last of my four pack. And I really have too much beer in my fridge to buy another four pack of this. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll have to look for it later back when my fridge is looking a little emptier. Um, Ruben's Brews, Meta Modern, Pacific Northwest, Amber. And I'm Matthew. This has been Showing the Brew. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.